moment for YouTube to catch up and then we'll get started. All right, I can hear myself in the background. I've muted it. All right, thanks for coming, everyone. Today is Tuesday, June 9th, and you are at another media briefing uh, for COVID-19. So we have statements from all of our panel members today. Um, first, we will be starting with Acting Medical Officer of Health, Dr. Shuli Wong, followed by Regional Chair Karen Redmond and CAO Mike Murray. So we have lots to cover today and I will uh, pass it over to Dr. Wong. Go ahead, Julie. Good morning, everyone. Um, so we continue to see cases reported, but overall the status of COVID-19 in our community continues to move in the right direction. Waterloo Region, along with most other areas of Ontario, will be permitted to move to stage two of the provincial reopening as of this Friday. It will be especially important as more restrictions are lifted and our economy continues to open up that we practice the recommended public health measures. As of 10.30 this morning, uh, we have uh, 107 active cases in Waterloo Region. Approximately 5.4% of people tested in Waterloo Region have tested positive for COVID-19, a total of 954 cases or 81% of positive cases in Waterloo Region are now resolved. There are currently 15 people or 1% of our cases who are hospitalized. Outbreaks in long-term care and retirement homes continue to stabilize and decrease in number. We currently have two active outbreaks and a total of 36, which have now been declared over. One outbreak in a group home has also been declared over. We do not currently have any new outbreaks in workplace settings. As we move into stage two of our reopening, as of this Friday, we find ourselves in uncharted waters. The wisest, most prudent approach with uncharted waters has always been to move carefully, cautiously, and thoughtfully. In our current circumstance, this means continuing to follow public health measures. This means continuing to practice physical distancing, continuing to wear a mask when you are in close proximity to others, continuing to wash your hands often, and even if you have mild symptoms, this means getting tested and staying at home. As we gradually reopen the economy, we will see more and more people move throughout Waterloo Region in the weeks ahead. Inevitably, this increases our contact with others and also increases our risk of coming into contact with the virus. Please remember that COVID-19 continues to circulate in Waterloo Region and that it is possible to come into contact with the virus anywhere in our community. This is why staying the course with our public health measures is so important right now. It is important that our local economy open up and it is important that we each do all that we can to try to minimize the spread of COVID-19. The number of infections could resurge if we are not careful. Please, let's continue to look after our families, our friends, and our neighbors. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Wong. I will pass it over to Chair Redmond. Go ahead, Karen. Thanks, Bethany. Yesterday, the province announced phase two of reopening starting this Friday. Our region was one of 24 areas allowed to enter phase two, which is very encouraging news for all of us. This will include businesses and amenities such as outdoor patios at bars and restaurants, personal services like hair salons, outdoor pools and splash pads, shopping malls, spiritual gatherings, and more. 
Unfortunately, public health units have not received guidance regarding the reopening requirements for businesses. So businesses that have questions about guidelines for reopening can visit the province website to look to see for the detail. Mike Murray will speak shortly about the region's plans for gradually reopening the region's programs and services. Entering phase two is the result of hard work of our healthcare staff, frontline workers, and citizens who followed the quarantine guidelines throughout COVID-19. Thanks to all of you for your diligence and for your patience. With more businesses opening and gatherings of 10 or less starting on Friday, I wanna stress again the importance of continuing public uh, health guidelines. We must stay six feet apart, wear masks when we're out, wash our hands thoroughly and often, and try not to touch our faces. We've come a long way. However, we don't have a vaccine and catching COVID-19 is still a community risk. Please continue to practice public health guidelines and keep us moving towards a COVID-free region. Thank you. Thanks, Karen. All right, over to CAO Mike Murray. Go ahead, Mike. All right, great, thanks. Um, so I'll cover off two things. One is, um, you know, with the uh, provincial announcement yesterday about uh, them moving to stage two of their reopening plan, what does that mean for the region? So I'll cover that off. And then I know there've been questions about um, cooling centers given the current um, extreme heat warning. So I'll cover that off uh, at the end. So in terms of um, the regional uh, recovery plan and reopening of our programs and services, Regional Council last week approved um, a framework for reopening of regional programs and services. Uh, that involves a gradual, thoughtful, incremental approach to reopening those programs and services that have been disrupted. Uh, what I think is important to note is that most uh, regional programs and services actually have continued through the pandemic, many, many critical services. <clears throat> so there are some that have been disrupted and that those will incrementally reopen, restart um, over the coming weeks and months. So um, as the province moves to stage two of their recovery plan, um, that uh, is a trigger for us to reopen some of our multi-tenant administration buildings that have been closed to the public for the last few months. So as of Monday, June 15th, we will be reopening to the public our buildings at 150 Frederick Street, 99 Regina Street, and 150 Main Street in Cambridge. Uh, the, some of the principles that have guided our reopening framework include ensuring the health and safety of employees and customers, maximizing the service that we're able to provide to our residents and citizens. Um, we have some staff who've been laid off and finding ways to return them to work and minimizing uh, negative financial impacts on the region. So those have been some of the objectives, principles. Um, as we reopen our buildings, people who access them will see some changes to our buildings uh, consistent with those principles. So for example, um, you'll see plexiglass barriers in our customer service areas much like we've done on our buses to keep staff and uh, customers safe. Um, there'll be new rules in our buildings to ensure physical distancing, things like limiting the number of people uh, in elevators, um, encouraging people to make appointments to avoid uh, lineups and queuing. You'll see more hand sanitizing stations and we'll continue to make more services available online. Um, the provincial announcement yesterday also included um, incremental gradual reopening of libraries and museums. And so given that door has now opened, um, our library and museum staff are working on uh, what a reopening, incremental reopening plan will look like. And we'll be bringing more information to regional council at a committee meeting next week about um, the details of that. Our libraries, as you may know, have been open for curbside pickup um, since June the 1st. So that will continue and we'll work on ways to uh, open them up for more um, uh, programs and services. So that's uh, you know, some, some of the implications for the direct delivery of regional programs and services. I'll talk briefly about um, cooling centers. 
So I think, as you know, there is uh, Environment Canada has issued an extreme heat warning. And uh, I'm happy to say that we have a number of cooling centers available uh, across Waterloo Region. Um, people can find out information about that on our website. And that would be um, www.regionofwaterloo.ca slash cooling and warming centers. Um, in particular, centers that will be open include uh, the region's building at 150 Main Street in Cambridge, um, in Kitchener, uh, the region's building here at 150 Frederick Street. Um, the city of Kitchener is opening up the Don McLaren Arena. And in the city of Waterloo, the city is opening the Adult Recreation Center. And the township of North Dumfries is opening up the North Dumfries Community Complex. So those are uh, the cooling centers that we have to date. Uh, but that website uh, that I mentioned is continually updated. So I would encourage people to go there, check for details about um, opening uh, hours and whether there's any additional centers that open. So I'm happy to answer any questions about uh, any of that. Great, thanks, Mike. Okay, we will move on to questions. So I will uh, turn it over to Ben. Go ahead, Ben. Good morning, folks. Hope you're doing well. This actually is a question about the cooling centers, uh, Mike. Is there any kind of, what does that look like as far as physical distancing goes? And is there a limit on capacity at those places? Um, I'm sure there is. Uh, so, um, you know, we're trying to operate the cooling centers in a safe and healthy way. And so encouraging physical distancing, um, which I'm sure will inv involve a, a limit on how many people can occupy each place. Um, I'll give you an example. Um, our building here at 150 Frederick, um, we're using our cafeteria. It has a separate door to the outside. Um, we've got um, you know, staff there uh, to make sure that people maintain physical distance. I poked my head in about half an hour ago and uh, there was a total occupancy of one, the staff person. Okay, thank you. And are the drop-in centers and shelters also open for those experiencing homelessness right now? Absolutely, yeah as they have been, you know, for the last many, many, many weeks. Okay, that's all my questions for the moment. Great, thanks, Ben. I will turn it over to Kate from CBC. Go ahead, Kate. Thank you. Um, I think maybe it was last week or the week before, Mike, you were talking about how the regional officials were talking about patios on like a, a region-wide um, plan-ish. Uh, could you delve into that a little bit, what has been discussed since then? Um, yes, I probably won't get into like really nitty gritty details, but um, there's been a ton of work by a working group of region and area municipal staff who've worked closely with um, the BIAs, uh, reps from Water Region Tourism Marketing Corporation, um, and the, the, the municipal and, and regional staff have included um, transportation staff, economic development staff, and others, uh, because you know this issue spans uh, many jurisdictions and uh, many program areas. So they have turned their mind to how can we as quickly as possible um, approve uh, patio expansions and potentially new patios. And so each municipality, I believe, has designated a lead person to be the contact person to try to uh, ensure that um, any applications from businesses are approved as quickly and seamlessly as possible. And the region has also designated a lead contact person. So this is to make sure that um, no business owners gets bogged down in you know, ping-ponging back and forth between the region, the area municipalities, or ping-ponging back and forth between program areas uh, within a municipality. So um, I think that uh, we've got a good process in place. Uh, the province has provided some guidelines. Uh, I think we are all waiting on more guidelines from the province about specifically um, how should a business set up their patio, their tables, their distancing. Um, so there's some guidelines around that, but I think there's room for some more clarity. 
Room for more clarity. I like that. Um, Dr. Wong, I also wanted to ask you, uh, with us going into phase two, but Toronto and Hamilton not, are you at all concerned about people coming from those regions to our area to enjoy our patios and our beaches and the things that we have open that they don't? You're muted, Judy. Yeah, most areas in um, Ontario uh, will be permitted to move to stage two. Uh, so obviously uh, the residents in the GTA in areas which are still in stage one will have a variety of options around, around the province. Um, I think that, um, you know, I expect that most of the people that will be enjoying the um, activities that, you know, we are not allowed to do will be residents of Waterloo Region and that uh, they will continue to show um, a level of adherence and discipline uh, that we, we have been seeing uh, in our community uh, with respect to these measures. So um, I, I really ask that people continue to um, do the physical distancing and the other things that we've recommended because that's gonna be our new normal and that's gonna be the key way um, that we keep infections at a relatively low level uh, going forward. And so you're not at all concerned about people from Toronto coming here and potentially spreading COVID? Well, I think that can be, uh, people can come from, from outside our region um, in, a, in a lot of different areas in Ontario. Uh, so, you know, I ask that people that come employ those same measures that have been recommended across the province. And Mike might have some um, things to say. Yeah, I, I was just going to add to what Dr. Wong said, and, and that is, you know, Kate, I think, I think it's a potential. I think the practical reality is with the guidelines in place, the capacity is going to be quite limited, right? You know, like, so restaurants and bars are open for outdoor patios only. You know, so if you look around Waterloo Region and think about how many spots to sit at an outdoor patio exist, it's relatively limited. So, um, you know, I think people just need to um, realize that, that um, there's still some pretty significant restrictions in place. And, you know, some of the other amenities and, and uh, services that are opening up, they're also going to have restrictions around uh, physical distancing, number of people in, uh, in an establishment at once. So uh, although I think it's really a great move and it's going in the right direction, uh, people are going to have to be quite patient. And, and I think that is just going to be a practical limitation on people from other places coming. They, they may come, but there may be long lineups to, um, to get a seat at an outdoor patio. Very long lineups because you have to be six feet apart. Okay, that's it for me. Thank you. Thanks, Kate. I'll pass it on to Joanna from the record. Go ahead, Joanna. Great. Thank you. Um, just following what uh, Mike said there, like, is there some worry with these things reopening and the limited capacity that people are going to be kind of milling about close together? Because as you said, like, if people are spreading out by, you know, two meters, you know, at a certain point, you're going to be far away from where you want to get in and people are just going to get closer and closer. What I, you know, I'm hoping what happens is um, that there'll be some kind of self monitoring and, and self limitation on that. And, you know, I think we're already seeing lineups at some establishments, you know, lineups at stores. Um, and people are typically well distanced in those lineups. Um, you know, I've experienced it, um, you know, at a grocery store. Uh, so, you know, I think that's likely to be the case. Um, and then I think it's going to be self-limiting. You know, at some point people will say, you know, I'm so far back in this line for the patio. Uh, there's no point in, in standing here any longer. Did you have anything to add, uh, Dr. Wong? Uh, yeah, I would ask. I, I've seen the same thing. Uh, I've seen that by and large, um, people have uh, you know, uh, tried to employ physical distancing where they could uh, when lining up to get into a, a grocery store, for example. 
and I would just ask that people continue to do that. Um, you know, this will depend largely on what we do as a community, how we act, and how much we embrace the new normal of uh, physical distancing. Karen? And if I could just add, I mean, the fact that Waterloo Region is one of the 24 areas opening up is a testament to the fact that people have listened to public health guidance. And it's already been stated several times, but closing down was actually more straightforward than opening up in stages. So we have to rely on people to continue to physically distant, to continue to wear the mask, to protect other people. The reality is we have seen places um, in Canada and around the world where um, if there's a spike, you rethink this. So I think people will recognize that this has been a, a collective investment in the greater good. And I think people will continue. And to Mike's point, my husband's gone to get bananas and come home and said, you know, there were 25 people in line. I don't need bananas that bad. I think that will continue to happen. I think the prospect of being able to sit on a patio will be enough that people will feel that there is a greater sense of freedom and up to 10 people meeting with um, social or physical distancing, I think is uh, a huge improvement on our social interaction. I think people will really appreciate that. I thank you. Uh, and a couple of questions for Dr. Wong. Mm -hmm. um, now that we're down to two outbreaks in long-term care, which is quite remarkable considering where we came from. I know you've talked before about how what happens, what goes on in the community affects what goes on in long-term care. So are you worried as more people are out and about and interacting that we're going to see another spike in outbreaks in long-term care and retirement homes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, um, I am always, um, you know, wanting to monitor to see how it goes. And again, um, our, our goal is to try to keep the, the rate of community infections relatively low. Uh, and there's gonna be some additional um, um, monitoring that's gonna continue for uh, long-term care home and retirement homes. So the province is, um, asking the homes to regularly, um, you know, test, test their residents. And so that's gonna be something that's gonna be put in place. And um, sorry, not test their residents, I'm sorry, test their staff. Uh, and we'll just continue to look uh, to see what the trends uh, show. But really, you know, the key thing to prevent outbreaks from happening in homes, in workplaces, um, in groups of friends uh, really is to abide by that uh, physical distancing. And even though uh, the, the, uh, the limit for gatherings has now been increased to 10, I would still recommend that um, people practice physical distancing um, when they are in those gatherings. Um, just continue to do that and that will minimize your risk. Okay. Um, and just uh, you mentioned trends. We're seeing quite a few more people young, quite a few more young people testing positive in the community in the past few weeks. Do, is that just because more testing is being done, or is it related to workplace outbreaks? Um, yeah. So um, we're going to be taking a look at uh, in more detail uh, at the trends um, since you know there's been that expanded testing, and we've been sort of reopening um, the economy as well, because it's gonna, it's, it is likely to look different because before it was, you know, very much, um, our numbers were very much influenced by what was happening in the long-term care homes and retirement homes. So we're gonna take a look at that in, uh, in, 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 in more depth. Um, but yeah, we could, we, we could see what we saw in the beginning of, of the, the COVID, um, pandemic in our uh, in our region, which was, it was oftentimes, you know, people that weren't in the older age groups that were getting infected. Uh, that was at the beginning. And uh, we could be returning to that um, now. Uh, so we'll have to we'll have to monitor, uh, see where it goes from here. And is that a bit of a worry, though, because often the people at least that I see out and just hearing um, other people what they're seeing is that it's often the younger people who aren't 
um, yeah. distancing or wearing masks. Yeah, no, it's a good point, Joanna. We, we are always worried about, um, you know, people sort of feeling that, oh, okay, it's, it's safe now and I don't really have to follow the, you know, the, the recommendations that uh, continue to physically distance and, you know, stay at home if you're sick or get tested, et cetera. Um, I think, you know, that's always a worry that people see the numbers go down, see the outbreaks go down and think, okay, we're in the clear now. Uh, I think people have to remember that this virus has not gone away, that it's still circulating in our community. We still have cases and we are still at risk of very quickly having a resurgence of cases if we're not careful. Um, so that's why I kind of sound like a broken record and keep talking about those things, but they are really important. And I know there's a little bit of fatigue out there uh, for these measures, but what I'm encouraging people to, to think of uh, is to think of these measures as our new normal. That's just the way that we're gonna help protect each other going forward, that we just make physical distancing a normal part of, of, of our lives going forward. And if we can do that and wearing masks when around others, uh, you know, in, in addition to continuing to wash our hands, et cetera, and being very careful about when we have symptoms, not being with other people, not going into work, those are the foundational things. If we integrate that as our new normal, then we will have the best chance of uh, keeping the rates of infection low and also protecting those that are more vulnerable like our seniors. Great, thank you. That's my questions for now. Thanks, Joanna. Over to Namish. Go ahead, Namish. There's questions for, for Dr. Wong. Um, I know you mentioned um, there, was, there was provincial guidelines for, for salons reopening. Um, I'm, I'm wondering if the region's gonna have their own guidelines like they did um, with something like community gardens, I remember a few weeks ago. Uh, yeah, hi, Namish. Thanks for the question. So uh, we are act actually anticipating uh, further guidance, more specific guidance, as Mike mentioned, from the province um, uh, that, you know, um, we're, we're still awaiting that. However, um, you know, there is provincial guidance that has been released uh, for various uh, workplace settings, and those give a good foundation for workplaces uh, in terms of the things that they need to be uh, um, making sure um, are, are, are present in their workplaces to allow for a safe reopening. And there are times when, um, you know, we will also, if we feel uh, there's a need for some additional uh, guidance at the local level, we will also develop local guidance. Um, so that's something that, uh, you know, we sort of continually monitor um, whether there is sufficient provincial guidance and or whether or not we need to add to that through producing local guidance. We, we're trying to be efficient, right? Um, because producing local guidance um, and having 34 health units produce their own local guidance isn't very efficient. <laughs> so if there's a need for that, we'll do it or we'll add to provincial guidance. Uh, but if there is sufficient provincial guidance, we'll use that. All right, just one more question. Are there any concerns with the region of Waterloo um, extending their gatherings to 10 people and would you recommend that people still stay outside or go inside people's homes or what would be your recommendation there? I know it's hard to, to distance maybe inside a home so. No it's a good question. I think it's appropriate um, that we're moving now to a higher limit, a limit of 10. I think we're ready for that in the region. Um, I, I, I would still recommend that um, people in terms of you know um, their bubbles We've heard a bit about that, right? Um, that they still stay with their immediate family uh, members and that if they decide to gather with um, uh, other friends and, and family members, you know, up to, up to 10, that they look at uh, ensuring that people can physically distance at their gathering, uh, try to hold the gatherings in outdoor uh, places if possible, because that does reduce the risk compared to, to an indoor setting and uh, look at maybe, you know, making sure the gathering doesn't last very long. Uh, so having a, sh a shorter time frame for the gathering, all of those things uh, will reduce risk, as well as thinking thoughtfully about, you know, if there are more vulnerable members 
of, of the family, what can be done to, to, to protect them more. Um, but uh, really, again, even if you're going to have more people in a social gathering, uh, make it so that your guests can socially distance. And what, just one more question. Um, if you wanted to have a, a gathering with, with people from a city like Toronto that, that isn't reopened, would you recommend anything against that? Or um, would you recommend people stay with people in the, their own city or um, anything there? Sorry, I couldn't, I couldn't hear the first part of your question, Manish. I was just asking if you would recommend people don't gather with people from other cities or anything like that. Well, I, I would say really that it's, it's more, you know, the, the gathering limit is now 10. And, uh, you know, to follow the provincial order and, and keep it uh, under that limit. Uh, and whoever you're gathering with, just allow them to socially distance, encourage the use of masks among the people that are gathering. Um, that, that's gonna be the main things that, 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 that I would say would, uh, would be best in terms of what people keep in mind when they're gonna gather with, with, with others. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Namish. I will pass it over to Nicole from CTV. Go ahead, Nicole. Hi, good morning. Um, splash pads um, are op allowed to open as a Friday. What is your advice to parents? And is there any evidence or research available yet about the spread of the virus through water? Okay, yes, yeah, so I understand that the, that the municipalities are uh, looking at what they need to put in place um, in order to reopen. And of course, uh, as I mentioned previously, we are waiting um, uh, further guidance from the province. We're also, you know, um, providing with the guidance that does currently exist um, for, for various um, settings. Um, yeah, um, COVID-19 is an infection uh, that uh, based on the evidence that we have to date, it's uh, spread through respiratory droplets, right? That's the, the mode of transmission. Um, so when we open up uh, settings, you know, we have to look at measures that will uh, enable the patrons uh, to exercise that physical distancing, um, you know, and look at other measures that uh, we've employed uh, for essential workplaces, for example, that have continued to work uh, during the pandemic. So enabling physical distancing, make sure that there's good cleaning, um, you know, making sure that um, there's an ability for people if they want to wash their hands or have um, access to um, alcohol uh, hand wash, that they, that they have that, uh, things like that, right? Things like we've also put forward for community gardens. Um, so I think those are the types of uh, recommendations that um, those different settings will be putting in place to en enable uh, uh, a safe reopening. Thank you for that. Um, my next question is, um, the Premier is expected to make an announcement on the province's plan to reopen child care centres today. What preliminary discussions have you had locally about reopening these centres in a safe way? Um, you know, what concerns do you have about it? Um, I guess that's more for Mike Murray. Sure. Um, so I know that, uh, you know, there's a whole network of uh, child care service providers that have been working together through the pandemic because, as you know, one of the things that that network has done is opened up emergency child care centers for children of um, essential workers. So based on that work, um, you know, we've got some models and some protocols in place for how to open up child care centers in a safe and healthy way for the staff, for the children, for their families. Uh, so, you know, I we're looking forward to uh, the province's guidance and direction around opening up more child care centers, but I'm imagining that they will base their guidance on the guidance they provided to date on how to operate a childcare center in a safe and healthy way. Um, so, you know, and, and as you know, there's, there's center-based childcare and there's also home childcare. And through the whole pandemic, actually home childcare has continued to operate um, and will continue to operate. So, 
Um, you know, I think we're looking forward to hearing what the province has to say, but there's been active conversations over the last while about um, what will reopening of more childcare centers look like. And I think, as I said, we've got good models uh, to learn from. Um, one second, I'm muted. Oh, I'm not muted, sorry. Um, I guess this message is for Dr. Wong. Um, what were the factors, because we understand that uh, medical officers of health provided their guidance in whether or not they felt the region was ready to open. So what factors were there that you felt that the region was ready for stage two? Yeah, so I am. Um, so yeah, so uh, there, I, I'm not sure who all was consulted. But uh, yes, uh, you know, I was consulted. Uh, and uh, I felt that uh, the region was moving in a in a in a in a good direction. Uh, we were seeing some positive signs, uh, the overall situation, um, you know, getting better. Um, so, you know, um, uh, it's important, obviously, to balance the risk of COVID-19 with also um, the, the, the risks of, a, of, a, of, of, um, of restrictions remaining in place longer than they would need to be. Um, so I did not have any concerns uh, with the province's plans uh, to move to stage two for Waterloo Region. Uh, as you know, the province has indicated and other medical officers have indicated it as well, we, we need to carefully monitor what, what the effects will be of this reopening. And um, that's also why I've stated it is especially important now uh, for our residents who have been doing a good job with uh, practicing those public health measures that we've been recommending. It's especially important now that they continue to practice those measures so that we can continue to progress in the right direction. And you're, you know, Murray, um, Mr. Murray, you mentioned that you're waiting for more guidance for the province. Any idea when that guidance will come when it comes to the reopening plans? No. no. Uh, what we, you know, uh, there's a, what we do know is that the folks at the provincial level work really hard to try to get us uh, the guidance and uh, so, you know, as soon as we get it, uh, we will provide it to those that need to be aware. Those are all my questions. Thank you. Thanks, Nicole. All right. I just got a note from Kevin saying that his questions have been answered. So I will look around the tiles to see if anyone has a follow up. I see Ben and I see Kate. So Ben, you can go first. Thanks very much. Um, this actually is a follow up to Kate's question way earlier about patios and lineups. If, if we are expecting long lineups, uh, like you mentioned, that that may discourage people from coming. But if those long lineups are going to be happening in the downtown areas, are we planning on having any additional officers out to make sure that physical distancing is taking place? So, uh, you know, what I will say is uh, I'll repeat what I've said a number of times, which is, I think, as you know, there's four organizations that are working on uh, monitoring and enforcement and compliance. So police, local bylaw, regional bylaw, and public health inspectors, and they will all continue to be out and about um, enforcing, monitoring uh, different parts of, um, you know, the orders and, and the regulations. So, um, you know, I think we'll continue to see that presence as we've seen over the last, you know, weeks and months. Okay, thank you. The other one is a it's the follow up to Nicole's question about splash pads. I guess this one is for Dr. Wong. It just kind of it just kind of occurred to me, and obviously I don't have a degree in medical science, but if it spreads by water droplets and we've got like water features that spray mist all throughout the area, does that bring any concern to you? I know it's not spread by water droplets. Uh, it's uh, spread by respiratory droplets. So when uh, you know when people's droplets, so to speak, in their noses and mouths um, exit and then land on other people's noses or mouths or, you know, that's the kind of transmission that occurs. It's not, it's not the, the droplets in the, uh, uh, of the water in the splash pads. Um, so it's, it, it's the, it's the, um, 
physiological droplets of a person in, in their, their nose and their, and, and their mouth. I can understand why you'd ask though, because they're, they're both like droplets, <laughs> water droplets and, you know, nasal yeah, and, 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 and buccal droplets, but um, it's really, uh, it's, it's spread through the respiratory route as opposed to the water route. Right, but does, does having moisture in the air carry the virus further? Is there any studies on that yet or no? No, what we understand to date is that it's really carried through, um, you know, when people cough or sneeze or talk, when they, um, you know, do things that could potentially have their respiratory droplets um, leave their noses and mouths and then land on other people's uh, faces. That's basically the primary mode of transmission. Okay, thanks, Ben. And Kate, do you have a follow up? Yeah, mine uh, was sort of spurred by Nicole's splash pad question as well, because splash pads are going to be the first time that kids kind of get out to be able to do stuff like they don't have playgrounds right now. Um, and my kids are terrible at social distancing. I'm constantly reminding them to social distance and they don't know what I'm talking about or physically distance. Um, and I'm going to say I'm a good parent because I keep doing that. But for the kids that maybe aren't getting that message, like is public health coming up with any kind of educational resources to help teach kids about this a little bit more? Like they're mostly getting it from their parents and they might not be getting it in the kid friendly way that sometimes public health gets this information out to kids, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think, I think what public health, you know, I think what we think will be most useful is if we help the operators, um, put in place measures that will help enable that physical distancing without relying, you know, mostly on the children themselves to physically distance. I, 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 I take your point, it's, it's, it's very true, right? Even with adults, <laughs> they don't always listen. <laughs> so, but if there's a way, you know, to sort of make it much easier for people to, to maintain that physical distancing, like having less people around, um, you know, or, um, you know, making sure that there's um, there's not that many people, such that when there are people around, uh, it's 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 easier to maintain maintain distance. Um, so you know, it will it will be facility specific, uh, but um, you know that's that's what public health will be doing with those operators. Um, you know, to 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 help them put in place those measures. Uh, that will help ensure uh, physical distancing or greatly improve the chances of physical distancing, um, you know, and that probably is going to involve some limitation in terms of attendance. It won't be like before, right? Because you have to, you have to make sure there's not too many people and there's not crowding. Um, I think Karen. Sorry, I think Karen wanted to chime into that question as well. Go ahead, Karen. Just to tag on to the question, um, I've been doing a series of weekly uh, videos talking to kids about COVID-19, and I don't pretend to have the simplicity or direct message that public health may have, but it's certainly a topic that I've been uh, continuing to reinforce throughout this pandemic and I'm happy to do again now that we can acknowledge that splash pads and other um, places are open as well as that they may be able to congregate with a larger group of people and just reinforce the fact that uh, physical distancing is still in place. Thanks, Karen. I think you have a topic for your next video. Um, I'm, I see Nicole with her hand up. Go ahead, Nicole. This is um, in line with the questions of the splash pads. Will we see public bylaw officers sort of there sort of like saying, sorry, there is, you know, X amount of kids there's only this amount of kids allowed right now um, to be at the splash pad. Yep, so I'll just reiterate what I said before. You know, there's a host of enforcement officers out and about, uh, and you know, they'll be out and about, and one of the places they'll be around is splash pads. So, um, you know, and as we've said before, their goal is compliance. Um, so, you know, I imagine I could picture scenarios where you know, they're providing education and awareness and encouragement to people to maintain appropriate physical distancing and encouragement to parents to, um, you know, keep an eye on their kids. And my second question, I guess, goes back to the restaurants and salons question. If we see a surge of people coming from um, 
different areas that aren't allowed to open up those businesses. Are you going to say, okay, we're going to service our Waterloo region residents first, give them priority given we're the ones being compliant versus the other areas? So, you know, Nicole, I think we're in the realm of speculation and, uh, you know, I think it's going to be up to individual businesses to decide how they manage the capacity and the loads. Um, you know, I think some of the, the personal care settings, almost all of it's going to be by appointment. Uh, so, you know, they'll have to decide who gets an appointment. I would speculate that their regular customers will get, you know, first appointments, I imagine. And then, you know, if bars and restaurants are having lineups, you've all been in lineups, you know, typically it's first come first serve. Uh, I think it'd be a challenge to, you know, screen people by address and residence. Uh, but, you know, business owners are, um, they're smart. Um, they'll figure it out. Karen, did you want to chime in? Just if I can add, um, obviously there are people that have been given tickets throughout this pandemic in some of the personal service areas, specifically Nicole, who weren't adhering to it. But I would have to tell you, I think what I hear from the business community is they are embracing this opportunity for the economic benefit to start servicing their clients and they're sending out emails to their client base and saying, get in line and we will let you know. And the parameters are very strict. There probably are businesses that are being a little bit less vigilant, but the reality is they recognize the economic hit that they've taken and they're very anxious to do this right. So my sense is the vast majority of businesses are going to make sure that people come in, you know, on time for their appointment uh, you know, they have strict parameters on how they receive the service and that they'll leave because they recognize that should this go badly, we may have to um, take this uh, opportunity away and they very much have been waiting to be able to open business as usual or at the new normal, not as usual. Thanks, Karen. Okay, last call. Any final questions? Looks like that's it. So I will thank you for joining us again today and we will see you again on Friday. Thanks everyone. Yeah. Bye-bye.